to follow along with the sermon notes, uh, you are welcome to do so. We have the QR code in the screen uh, right behind me as well as in the bulletin and uh, you can take a picture of that and scan that and go to the, the notes section and follow along this morning. I know for some of you this is your very first missions conference that you have been a part of and you're wondering what it's all about and so I wanted to take a few minutes this morning uh, to be able to uh, remind us and help us to understand how we can reach our world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. When Jesus ascended up to heaven, he told us our responsibility was to make disciples all over the world. We are to reach Northern Virginia 
in the uttermost part of the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We reach our area uh, through our community grows and community cares programs through shining our light, and we reach our world through partnering with other missionaries who are shining their light and in introducing people to Jesus Christ. And every year during our Spring and Missions Conference, uh, we like to take some time and remind ourselves of our responsibility and our opportunity uh, to be involved in reaching people with the gospel, to be able to introduce ourselves to new missionaries and at times get reacquainted with other ones. There's so much that we can do to reach the world with the gospel. And there's so much more than we, that we can do that we haven't been doing. And I want us to take some time this morning to, to look at three different areas of how we can be involved in the work of worldwide evangelism, the work of starting churches. And we're going to do something a little different this morning. Uh, we're going to have a whole bunch of people come up here. And it's, you're not just going to have to listen to me. I thought I was going to get an amen from that one. But... Uh, you're going to be able to have the opportunity to hear from uh, different pastors, from uh, my wife is going to say something, and as well as our missionaries. And uh, we're going to look at three different areas on going, giving, and guarding. Before we do that, I forgot. The kids have Kid Zone to go to. I was moms were like, get them out of here. They've got to go. And uh, so kids, we have the opportunity. So every week, the kids are going to, every service, the kids are going to have the opportunity to go with one of our missionaries. Uh, this week, they have the opportunity to go with John David and Sabrina Williams up to the Netherlands. And so they're going to head on out. And uh, I apologize. And so I just was so excited about getting into the sermon that uh, I forgot about the kids. And so I just wanted, I thought they needed to hear it too. But uh they need to hear from the missionaries. And so, but we're going to do something a little bit different on giving, going, and guarding. And uh, we're going to be looking at these three different aspects uh, through it. And I've asked Brother uh, Pastor Jim Mote uh, if he would help kick off this sermon uh, by talking about the aspect of giving to missionaries. <laughs> there went the best portion of our congregation. You know that, right? The ones that are paying attention along the way. First, let me say, good morning, and I hope all of us are excited about Missions Conference 2024 here at Community Baptist Church. What a, uh, what a blessing. Now, first of all, please, don't get nervous. I'm just going to talk about giving. No offerings being taken. No checks are being written yet, although they should and could. Just wanted you to know ahead of time that that's not my thought. But, but I do want to spend a little bit of time this morning with us, and I want to share it in two different ways. First of all, I want us to recognize and realize that giving, the very object of giving, has its beginning in creation. God gave us. God created time. God created the earth and the heavens above. But God also created the principle and the purpose and the plan of giving. Listen to what he did. He's the author of giving. He gave Adam a wife. He gave Adam responsibilities and accountabilities. He gave Adam dominion over the fish and the fowl and the creatures abound. He gave him as an example of God's giving. We have a giving God. We have a God that created giving. A part of the image of God that he created in you and I as Christians is the principle and the power of giving. So we recognize that as a part of the missionary plan. Missions runs from Genesis all the way to Revelation. Missions is not a, a, a one-year event. Missions is not a one-church presentation. Missions is God's heart. Mission, God has the mission, and he's given that from beginning to end, from the Alpha and the Omega. That's him. We're a part of that. 
And a vital part of that is giving. Giving of our time. Giving of our talent. Giving of our, uh, of our own personal resource of our individual personalities as each of these missionary couples and their families will ascertain. That's the reality to it. So I want to share it with you this morning in two different ways. Now I'm going to start this timer. Oh, wow. Didn't realize it gave me that much time. But listen, let me give you two different things, okay? Let me share with you a difficulty, and then I want to share with you a, 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 a plan that I think God has given us. I want to do this out of uh, Philippians, Philippians chapter 4, and I want to share with you, this is, this grips my heart. When I think of missions, I think of independent, missionary-minded, local New Testament churches, because that's the heart of God. That's the plan. Ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. That's been God's plan from the beginning. And God hasn't changed. God is still consistent as he always was. Philippians, let me give it to you this way here. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 15, I begin here. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, know this, missions is the gospel. It is the fact that Christ came, lived, died, rose again, and is coming again. So, he said, now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me. <laughs> That's just a tough thought. No church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. There's a little church at Philippi. There is a sermon in that. We'll do that at another time. Pastor, I'm holding you to that. But listen to verse number 16. For even in Thessalonica you sent once and again unto my necessity. Not, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. That's why these missionaries are here. Not just because they want a gift. Not just because they want a present. They want to be able that fruit eventually around the world itself may abound to your account, to your account, to your account, to, your account, to our account here. That's that reality. What an example. Let me just share this with you. Over the last 50 years of ministry and pastoring, one of the greatest tools for giving to missions and missionaries and the spread of the gospel at home and around the world has been faith promise giving. I've seen it work. I didn't understand it at first when my wife and I first began to give to it. I didn't know how it operated. I didn't understand the extent of it and the blessings of it. And I didn't understand the biblical principle of it. But I do now. I, I encourage you to read with me this text, which really does describe for you and I faith, promise, giving. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, I read a little bit and then I'm going to read also uh, uh, a, uh, a, another portion in verse number 6. But in chapter 9 of Second Corinthians, and I'll give you this first, for as touching the ministry to the saints, it is superfluous. In other words, I, it's silly for me just to sit here and talk to you that you ought to give to missions. It's, it's ridiculous for us to have to get up here and prove to you that you really should just give a little bit to missions. No. Paul said that's, that would be ridiculous for me to write to you. But I'm going to go all the way down to verse number 6. But this I say, He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he purposes in his heart. When it says every man, I term it, I, I, I term it like this. Every man, woman, and child. I think all of us need to learn. All of us need to understand. Every man, according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give. Didn't sound like an option. Didn't sound like maybe a suggestion. Sounded to me like, let him give. That's what the word says. Not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. Why? Because God is a cheerful giver. God gave his only begotten son before the foundation of the world, before God stood out on nothing, when nothing existed and spoke and everything came into existence. 
God had already given the greatest gift of all. He is a cheerful giver. And he still does that today. You cannot outgive him. That's not going to happen. But he says here in verse number 8, uh, he said, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. Well, that's a promise. That ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. So as you give, as you give by faith, that's what faith promise is really all about. It's a two-worded promise here, okay? It's faith. You're giving by faith. But he repeats it here. He says uh, in verse 9, As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad. He hath given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower. CBC, we're the seed. Those four and a multitude of others, they are the sowers. So we're going to minister that to them. Listen to what it says they're going to do. He said, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. How can you go wrong? What a truth. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. Faith promise. Two words. Faith. Now, when, when it talks, talks about faith, faith promise, we're not talking about, about go check, check your checking account, account, see if you have any money left over you can give to missions. It's, it's not talking about, talking about reviewing your family budget uh, uh, to see whether or not uh, 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 you can, it's not about skipping three Starbucks coffee every week so you can have $20 at the end of the week to give to missions so you don't feel guilty about not giving. It's by faith. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. So faith, promise, is the first part about it, is, uh, is faith. And the promise is you're not promising the church. You're not even promising the missionary. You're not even promising the faith, promise, missionary program. You're promising God. You're promising God, God. I, I, I want to be a cheerful giver. God, I want something to purpose in my heart. God, I'm going to pray and ask you, God, you purpose in my spiritual heart what you think I ought to give. And, I, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to be faithful to you. On a week that I may not have it, and I may have to decide. I, I, listen, I, I, I have 50 years of stories and illustrations how that God gave and how that God provided when people said, I didn't have it, Pastor. I knew I was going to have to pay this bill, but I knew I'd promised God and I couldn't go back and I decided I was just going to give it anyways. And he gave it anyways. And before the bill was finally due, he had enough not only to pay the bill, but a little extra to buy beside. Listen, faith promise giving is, uh, is an amazing plan. When you look at it, when you, when you begin to recognize and realize it, you don't want to hear ever, ever again out of any good, sound Bible preaching church. You do not want to hear, I, no other church communicated with me, only you only. You, we don't want, we want to hear this here. And this church at Corinth was filled with all kinds of struggles and difficulties and personalities. But they understood this. They understood this. Let me finish up this morning just about the benefit of faith promise. If you promise God and obey God, by giving, you will grow in grace. Giving seems to make us grow spiritually. It, it, it has an effect on you. Because when you give by faith and, and, and trust the promise of God, every time you read a missionary letter, every time you hear a missionary name, every time you hear another country, you go, wow, man, thank you, Lord, for the grace to be a part of your vital plan, to be a part. God's will is this. Not, he is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to know him. <laughs> That's God's plan. That's, That's God's, God's promise. promise. You, you get, get to be a part, part of that. You, you get, get to be a part of his word. And you get to be a part of his work. Giving allows us to grow. And when you grow in grace, here's the other thing. When you grow in grace, it gives you the opportunity to grasp and understand the very principle of missions, the very principle of the gospel, that all should come to know him. 
that Christ may not have died in vain, that we would, uh, we would tell and we would uh, expand. So giving allows you to grow. Growing allows you to grasp the very heart, the very thought, the very plan and purpose and power that God has to save souls. That's what missions is all about. This is a great time, great time to spend together. The music has been amazing. But missions is about the gospel. The gospel is about you and me giving by faith. Faith, Faith promise, promise giving. giving. Good, Good plan. plan. Check, Check it out. out. Use it. God will bless you for it. Thanks. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. So, so one aspect is giving. If you want to be a part of giving, you can take the offering envelope in front of you that has different segments, and uh, you indicate how much you want to give the missions. Also in line, uh, you can do the same thing. And so a second way that we can be involved in the work of missions is by guarding our missionaries. Missionaries are on the front line. Serving the Lord. Turn with me in your Bibles to, to Romans chapter number 15. Missionaries have a huge target on their backs by Satan. If Satan can take out a missionary family, it can cause so much damage. It keeps the gospel from getting to people in certain lands. It discourages people who look up to that missionary, including people uh, from their sending church and supporting churches. It harms the name of Jesus Christ. It can do so much damage to the cause of Jesus Christ when a missionary falls and sins. You know, missionaries are heroes. We call them heroes, but they're not superheroes. They are vulnerable. They're vulnerable because, as I said, they're on the front line, but also because oftentimes they're all alone. Think about how much you're helped by coming to church every Sunday. You've had a bad week. You've, You've had, had difficulty. You've struggled. You're just, you, you wake up and you're not feeling good. And you come to church and you start talking to people. And how that encourages your spirit. How that lifts you up. Missionaries will often go to areas where they don't have that sense of community. They don't know anybody. They don't have a church to attend. They're, they're starting a church. They're often all alone and very vulnerable. When Eric and I went to Uruguay, to start a church. For the first 10 months, we had a church to attend. But then we went to a city about two hours away uh, where we didn't know a single person. Our kids had no friends to play with. My wife had no ladies to share life with. Uh, we had no church community. Uh, we were all alone and we felt very vulnerable. Many of you have experienced this here in the church as you've left your country of origin and you've come to the United States and you didn't know anybody. And, and you, you know, know what it's all alike to feel that, that, that loneliness in your hearts and your minds. You, you know, know, it can be very difficult for missionaries. I read a recent uh, uh, survey done just a couple of months ago. About 40% of all independent Baptist missionaries only remain on their field for one term. For four years. Uh, many missionaries are on deputation for two to four years. Or two to three years usually. Then they're learning a language for a year. And then they are only on the field for about three to four years. And, and from my personal experience, I would say that the vast majority of them come home uh, because of discouragement. And we must understand this. And we must do all we can to help missionaries. So how can we help? There's two things that I would encourage you to do. First of all, we can pray for our missionaries. At least eight times, the great missionary, the Apostle Paul, encouraged people and asked people to pray for him. In Romans chapter 15, verse number 30, it says, Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake, and for the love of the Spirit, that you strive together with me, notice this, in your prayers to God for me. And then he lists some things. Things, that I may be delivered from them that do not believe in Judea. He said, pray for my protection. That's something you can pray for missionaries about. You can pray for God's protection upon them. You can pray as they're traveling from church to church, from place to place, that God would have his hand upon them as they're on the roads. You know what it's like to drive in areas like this. It can be pretty dangerous. It can be pretty crazy. And they're on the road all over the place. Pray for their protection. When they get to different countries, some of them are going to very difficult fields. Pray for God's hand to be upon them. And so he prayed that they would be protected. Then he continues, and that my service which I have for Jerusalem may be accepted 
of the saints. Pray for their acceptance. He was praying, Paul, was he was going to Jerusalem, he wanted other people to receive him. Pray that missionaries will be accepted by churches as they're going about, that the churches will accept them, receive them as they go to their fields. You know, the great thing is that God knows who they're going to be ministering to already before they do. Pray that God will go before them and that these missionaries will be accepted by the people that they're ministering and that they're preaching to. And then he continues in verse 32. He said that I might come unto you with joy by the will of God and may be with you and may with you be refreshed. Pray that they'll be they'll remain encouraged. It can be discouraging. It can be difficult for missionaries. And he said, pray that I might be encouraged. Pray for our missionaries. Encourage them to, to stay faithful. And this is a great way. This is, you read through the different eight requests. Paul talks about boldness amongst other, other things. Many things to be praying about. And these are a great list to pray for our missionaries. But can I encourage you to go beyond generalities? Oftentimes, we pray for our missionaries by saying, God bless our missionaries. What does that mean? Really, what does that mean? God bless our missionaries. I encourage you to go beyond the generalities and go into the specifics. Well, how do we know how to pray specifically? Paul, this list that he gave them was about specific things that he, he was going through, that he wanted people to encourage him about and to be praying for him about. And so he had a specific thing. How can you know what's going on with missionaries? That leads us to our second thing. And that's another way you can be involved is by adopting one of our missionaries, by making it a priority to select one or two of our missionary families and adopt them for the year. When you adopt one of our missionaries, uh, you will get their prayer letter sent to you, to your email, where you can know exactly what's going on in their hearts. You can know what they're going through. Uh, when Paul was writing to the church at, at Colossians, he mentioned six different guys. And he says about them, he said, these have been a comfort unto me. The, the Apostle Paul said, said there were guys that were in my sphere of influence that encouraged me, that were a help to me. That's what we can do for our missionaries. We can come alongside them. We can be a blessing to them. We can comfort them. If Paul needed them in their lives, I can tell you these missionaries need them in their lives as well. So I challenge you to adopt one of our missionaries. Every prayer letter, as I said, we come into you. Uh, you can get online. Uh, Matt Skinner has spent time to update our new our website where you can get online and you can go to our missions page and their contact information, if they shared that with us, is there where you can email them. You you can uh, send them different letters. And so here's the missionary portal. You can look at their names. Go ahead and click on one of those uh, families there if we could. Just click one of the families. Yeah, there we go. And so you can read their prayer letter. You can send them an email straight from there. You can visit their website. It has their uh, WhatsApp phone number there. It has their Instagram. It has their Facebook. You can be in contact with our missionaries. You adopt them, and you will have all this access. You can see their latest video. You can see where they're located. And so this is an opportunity for you to adopt one of our missionaries and find out where they are and be in contact with every single one of them. Some things that missionaries, uh, that churches did for me, us, my wife is going to come up, and she's going to share a word of testimony. But something really simple that one church did is that they would send a birthday card to my kids with a little stick of gum in it, one little piece of gum in it. And it was some fruity flavor that they absolutely loved. And every year on their birthday, they got that card from that church, and they were so excited about it. They would, their birthday would come around, and they would look for the mail for that card to come with that stick of gum in it that would last them for 10 seconds. But it made the world a difference to them. It encouraged them. It helped them. There's so much you can do. Little things. You can be the difference between a missionary staying on the field for one term and a missionary staying on the field for their life by guarding them, by adopting them. One of the hardest things is for the wife. Erica's going to come on up. And, uh, you know, for a guy, you get on the mission field and you've got a goal. You're accomplishing things. For the wife, it can be a little bit different. It can be a little more difficult. She's going to share a little bit about her experience in Uruguay. Um, so 
Yeah, yeah there was two, two ladies here, here at CBC that they're, they're no longer here, here but they um, really made a big impact for me when I was first there, um, didn't know anybody. Uh, one of the ladies would be like a pen pal with me with emails. We would write back and forth and we were both busy. We didn't have a lot of time to talk for long periods of time on the phone, but she would send me really long emails and I was like the kids. I would look forward to it. I'd see it in my inbox and I'd like, oh, and so read that and then I would maybe a couple days later respond to her, but it was just keeping that connection and just having that relationship. Um, another lady that I knew, she would call me every now and then, so we would just chat for a few minutes and how are you doing, what's going on, fill each other in, and then that was it. But it was just a lifeline for me. Um, one of the churches that my husband mentioned with the gum, that church was actually in Canada, which always amazed me that we were way down in Uruguay and then it came all the way from Canada. Anyhow, um, there were some other churches that sent regular birthday cards to each of us. That was a really big blessing and encouragement. And another church had a ladies group that would send a birthday gift just to me every year, just a small girly um, thing. Just It was just really sweet, um, and that stood out to me. I will say that the churches that sent us cards with a bunch of signatures, like no personal messages, just signatures from people that we didn't really know, that was you know, thoughtful, and it was, it was the thought that counts, you know, but it just wasn't as impactful as the ones that came from people that we had a connection with. Um, the emails that said, I prayed for you today, or um, asking us for prayer requests, um, the people that sent birth, uh, not birthday, um, graduation invitations or wedding invitations, even though they knew we couldn't be there, but they thought of us, and they wanted us to feel included, and that was really special. Um, as my husband said, this is moving beyond generalities. This is entering into the fire with your missionaries and sacrificing your time and maybe finances if God leads you to, to send a gift or whatnot um, to invest into one or two missionary families to really make that connection. When I think about this topic, I think of how Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And obviously he was talking about finances, but it just it really resonates with me. It's, it's your time, too. If you invest your time, if you purposely spend time checking in with the missionary and praying for them and just reaching out to them. It, you can rejoice with them when things go well. You can weep with them, and it just really knits your heart together with them. So, adopt a missionary. Guard your missionaries. It can make a difference. You can make a difference to getting the gospel around the world to people. Troy Marvin would often send me a Facebook message and say, hey, what are your top three requests that you have when we were down in your way? And that meant the world to me. That meant someone was thinking about our family and wanting to pray for us. Something simple. You don't have to do a lot. Just reach out and put yourself in contact. You have a family with kids? Adopt a missionary that has other kids around your kid's age. Put them in contact. They can play Minecraft together. They can do any with technology today. Look for ways to invest. Guard our missionaries. We have a huge opportunity and a huge responsibility to be involved in the lives of our missionary. A third way that we can be involved, we can give, we can guard, and then we can go. I'm going to ask our missionaries to come up and they're going to share a word of testimony about how God told, called them to go. You know, the calling to missions is different for everybody. The calling to go to different fields is different for everyone. When God called my wife and I to go to Uruguay, people asked, why'd you go to Uruguay? And I uh, I told them it's because I saw a need. I felt a burden to go to Spanish-speaking people, and I felt a burden to go where no one else was. And I came across a thing that said Uruguay was the least evangelized country in all of South America. And I said, okay, God, that's where I'm going to go. If you don't want me to go there, close the door. God didn't close the door. And we ended up in Uruguay. That's what Paul did. Paul, on his first missionary journey, just went from city to city to city. He saw a need and he went. It wasn't until his second missionary journey, where he was trying to do the same thing, go from city to city to city, that the Holy Spirit said, no, you can't go there. And then he got the Macedonian calling. The calling is to go. Every one of us have a responsibility to go. And you're going to hear a short word of testimony of how God worked in the hearts of different missionaries. You're going to hear different things. And so I'm going to ask Brother Josh if you'll come up and just share how God worked in your heart or what he used. Sure. Uh, you know, I think I grew up in Knoxville, Tennessee, and uh, I was telling the, the group I had for our tour this morning that, you know, where I grew up, I, I passed 20 churches to get to my church, and if you were to tell me that there are millions of people around the world that had never heard of who Jesus is or had a church where they could hear the gospel preached, I would have never believed you. But, you know, it was taking mission trips in my lifetime that exposed me outside of my bubble of reality 
to the rest of God's world, to see millions of people around the world who are in desperate need of the gospel. And so I'll say what really impacted me, and when I surrendered to the mission field, my wife and I, we were on a mission trip in Peru and South America. We spent a month there in Peru, and while we were there, God dealt with our hearts that he wanted to use us to reach people somewhere around the world. So I will tell you, that is a big deal to us. That's one thing that God used in our lives was uh, going on a trip specifically. But yeah, definitely. Amen. Just grace. So there were two things that God really used in my life, um, one for missions and then one specifically for Japan. But um, growing up, I grew up in church, and my parents always said we're going to be very involved in the church. And so I remember from probably four or five, um, if a missionary came, we were having them in our house. They were staying with us, they were having dinner with us, and we got to know them. And so I got to know them as a four or five, six-year-old, and I knew the missionaries that our church supported because I had talked to them, I had seen them, they had been at my dinner table um, telling stories. And every night, my parents would get out all of the prayer cards that we had from all the missionaries our church supported, and they would put them on the couch, and we would just divvy them up and pray for all of them. And so I can still remember those missionaries to this day, and I got the opportunity to go back to that church, and they were still being supported. And I was so excited because I knew them, and I had a part even at four or five or six in praying for them and their ministry. At that time, I had no idea how important that was, but I was just excited that I got to pray for these people that I knew and had met. And then specifically for Japan, um, I didn't have any, um, any idea I would be going to Japan. I didn't have any want to go to Japan, but um, God used a friend in college who was from Japan, and he was on fire for the Lord, and he had such a burden for Japan. And he kept telling me about Japan. And I honestly didn't want to listen. I told him, I'm not going to Japan. I don't want to go to Japan. Um, that's not in my plans at all. But he had such a burden and a passion for Japan and to reach the people of Japan that it impacted me. And I started listening. And I was stubborn. But he kept telling me about Japan, and eventually the Lord used that to call me to Japan. Amen. John David? So my wife and I had the opportunity to go to the Netherlands on vacation to visit my uh, sister and brother-in-law who are missionaries in Oxford, England. And uh, God called me to preach uh, just a little, almost two years ago, and I had no uh, indication that missions would be the direction. That was actually the last thing on my list. I'm very much a homebody. Um, and, you know, I had a career and, and things like that. And uh, God just changed our perspective when we went there and we saw the people and we saw the need. Um, just as, as our brother was saying, you know, we can drive 10 miles in any direction from our house and you can find multiple churches in Georgia that are preaching the gospel. People have access to it everywhere. People in the Netherlands don't have that. And when I, I was able to go and see, I, the Lord really brought to my mind, you know, I grew up in a pastor's home. My, my dad took his first church the year I was born. So I've literally heard the gospel my whole life. And God just broke my heart and said, you know, you've had this hope your whole life. Obviously, I've not been saved my whole life, but the fact that I was saved, the fact that Christ dealt with me and I saw my need and accepted him as my savior, these people don't have the opportunity to, to get that. They don't have the opportunity to know that because there's no one to tell them. And so God broke my heart and said, you've had this opportunity, now it's your turn to go and to give it to them. And so we want to go to a place where there aren't many missionaries, where there aren't many Bible-believing churches, and we want to tell them the hope of the gospel, what we have, and what we found in Christ. Amen. Thank you all for having us. It's been a, it's been a blessing for sure. Um, God really used my life two things to really um, work missions in my heart. The first one is growing up is every evening my family would read missionary, autobi uh, missionary biographies. And the Lord used that to see time and time again in these people's life. They surrender to the call of missions, they go, and then God provides, and they do something for the Lord. Now something the Lord really, as a, I mean, as long as I can remember as a little boy reading those and hearing my mom read those and using that to really influence my life for missions, um, I'm telling you, read missionary biographies. I'm really um, a big proponent of that, big um, advocate of that. But the other thing he used is um, when I was praying about missions, I was praying about where the Lord wanted me to go. Um, I surrendered to the mission field. I was saying, Lord, 
where, where do you want me to go? And I was looking for, I wanted to make a trip to Europe um, just for um, a vacation. And I was like, all right, well, I want to go to, I was looking at Spain. And I was looking, I was looking at 47 million people. And then the margin of Christians in that is less than 2% of any form of church that is remotely like um, Baptist church. And I used that. And then I went there on a trip. It was like, a, it was a half missions trip, half, I'm um, just trying to figure out what the Lord wanted me to go. I was worked, I went with the Heltons. I met with him for a couple of days. But the Lord used that trip, used the trip in Belize when I was younger to really um, burden my heart for missions, going there and seeing the lost, seeing the people in other countries that they, they don't have. I grew up in the Bible, but I grew up in North Georgia. I'm, a, I'm a no one from North Georgia. I see there's churches all over the place. You go to Spain, you can go to city after city after city, big cities with no church, with no gospel light. Lord, use that to actually seeing it. Because I can tell you about it. I can show you a video presentation. We can show you pictures. But until you actually see it, it doesn't click until you see it. So I, if you ever get an opportunity to go, I encourage you to go on a mission trip. But I'm telling you, read about missionaries. Study those. It's, a, it's amazing to see how the Lord works. And Lord, use that to really work my heart. Um, and then burn my heart for missions. And then going to Spain and seeing the country and praying in the country. That's what the Lord used to call us to missions. Amen. Thank, Thank you, guys. guys. God, God uses, uses a whole bunch of different types of people. And and God, God uses people, people from different backgrounds. backgrounds. An amazing thing, you know, parents, you have an influence on the future of your child. Uh, a lot of them gave testimony of how they heard about missions and missionaries and had re uh, relationship with them. You know, parents, let's not focus so much on making our kids successful in this world. Let's pray that God will use them to be missionaries through the uttermost parts of the earth. Let's be willing to give that sacrifice and to get the gospel to people. You know, Jesus said, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. So church, I ask you, are you, are you praying for God to send missionaries? Mom, dad, are you praying for God to use your children as missionaries? We have an amazing responsibility. Are you willing to go? Are you willing to say, hear my Lord, send me, I'll go. Not because there's anything special about you. These missionaries are heroes just because they're willing to go. They're not great people. I mean, if you've spent any time with them, you know that already. I mean, there's nothing special about them. You guys know who I am. I was a missionary. I mean, you know what? You don't have to be anybody super special. God counted them faithful, putting them into ministry. He's, He's just, just looking, looking for people to willing to say, God, I'm willing. Would you say that this morning? God, I'm willing. And God, maybe you're a little older and you don't want to go as a missionary, but you're willing to say, God, I'm willing to pray for my kids, for my grandkids. I'm willing to give them to go. We have an amazing opportunity, an amazing responsibility as we think about missions. You can give. I encourage you to give. On the back of your uh, missions booklet, there's a QR code, because you know I love QR codes. And uh, you can go online, and you can fill out a faith promise card. And you know, it's good to fill out a faith promise card. Also, on the back table there, uh, there's an offering plate and a little card. Uh, you don't have to put an amount. It has three different options. It's, it's I've never given, uh, but I'm going to give now. I'm going to give to Faith Promise Missions. There's an option to say, I have been giving, and I'm going to give the same amount. The third option is, I've been giving, and I'm going to increase it this year. And you can just mark it and say, you know, there's, it, there's something about saying, I am making this commitment to give. I am making this decision before God. I am going to give. I encourage you to make that commitment. You can give. You can guard our missionaries. Pray for our missionaries. Adopt the missionaries. There's also a QR code on the back of this for adopt the missionary. Sign up. Also at that back table, if you're technology, you don't like technology. On the back table, there's a, a sign up there where you can sign up and say, I'm going to pray for these missionaries. This, month, this year, I'm going to focus on them. I'm going to write them. I'm going to reach out to them. I'm going to pray for them every day. I'm going to love them. And I'm going to do all I can to minister to them. And so, so adopt a missionary, guard our missionaries, pray for our missionaries, and then you can go. You can either say, Lord, here am I. I'm willing to go. You can make it a commit and make a commitment and say, God, I'm going to pray every day that God will send our young people out of our church to go. God, I'm going to pray every day for you to send my young man, my little girl, 
to go be a missionary to the other most parts of the earth. You can give, you can guard, and you can go. Great opportunities to be involved in the work of missions. Let us pray together. Father, thank you for your work. Thank you for joining us for part of a Sunday service at Community Baptist Church. I hope to meet you soon. May God impress his love upon your heart this week.